What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Brunel Jones II, you feel me? Oh my God. And we back with another episode of what it's like being a musician in New York City. Now, I was very surprised by the amount of support, love, and attention that the episode about jam sessions received. I did an episode about going to three back-to-back -back jam sessions in New York City on a Tuesday night. And everybody loved it. People wanted to see more. They were fascinated about how many jam sessions you could go to. So what I'm gonna do is another episode right now about more jam sessions on Tuesday night. I'm going to two jam sessions tonight, and then I'm gonna finish the night with going to a show that my friend Vittorio, great pianist, <laughs> playing along with this wonderful singer named Mar. The stars remind me of... And Vittorio is going to be the pianist who's playing on my April 10th Smalls gig. One quick announcement, I'm going to Aruba this weekend for a gig and I'm very excited about it. I'm going to document it. I hope that y'all are excited about it as much as I am because that's going to be the next episode after this one. Now, if you haven't already checked out the previous episodes and you're new here, this is a whole series. Off the top of my head, I honestly don't remember what episode I'm on right now. I've definitely done at least 10 episodes of this. Once you finish this episode, I encourage you to binge watch the rest, the rest of what it's like being a musician in New York City. Because all the episodes are different. Different gigs. I have a story time episode. I have the jam session episode. But... You all already know, for the folks who have been here, that I gotta hit the gym first. We're doing legs today, so I'm about to go hit it at the gym, and then we're gonna come back, change, get ready, all of that, and we're gonna head to Brooklyn for the first session that my boy Rico Jones is hosting at this spot called Something Else. Now, you may recall, in an earlier episode of what it's like being a musician in New York City, I did a concert with my boy Rico Jones. <laughs> And it's called the Jones Brothers because it was Rico Jones, Brunel Jones, that's me, and Victor Jones, the wonderful drummer, along with Pat Bianchi. Now on the gig, we called him Pat Bianchi Jones, you know, so he could fit in. But he's performing at that same spot and it has turned into a jam session. So I'm excited to go check that out. And then I'm going to play a little bit with my boy Rico. And then I'm going to head to the next jam session. And this next jam session is called the Java Jam Session. It's in Bushwick. So both of them are in Brooklyn. And then the last show is at New Blue, um, a very well-known music venue out in New York City that I've played on two different episodes, actually. Yeah, I was at that venue a couple times. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let's get to the gym. Yeah, dig? By the way, before I start this day, remember, I am answering questions at the end of this video like I've been doing in the past two videos. If you want to submit a question for me to answer in the next video, send me a DM to either of my Instagram accounts and start it off with Q&A and then your question. I will try my best to answer as many questions as possible. Thank you. <laughs> Everybody, I'm done with the gym. I'm about to go home, take a shower, and get ready to go to these jam sessions. And I'm looking forward to tonight. It's gonna be a good night, regardless of the rain. Forget that, it's gonna be great. All right, we got the fit for today. You ready to go to the jam session? Mission to Saturn, let's get it. Man, it is raining for real, for real. The rain is upon us. Lord have mercy. And so I got lucky and found a parking spot right outside. If you don't remember from the episode where I played at this spot, this spot is inside of a mall, which is really interesting. But let's get it. 
Yep, and we gotta take the escalator down and we'll get there. All right, here's the spot right here. raining much anymore i'm heading to the next session put my stuff in the car <sighs> let's get it how in the world is there traffic right now yo this city makes me mad like come on ah. all right we just found parking and now we about to head to this next spot which is around the corner hopefully it's a vibe i've never been here i don't know this jam it's a new jam to me so we about to check it out this is not what I expected. to expect at that jam session it was sick i love that type of stuff i love the groove i love r&b i love fun all that neo soul all that so that was nice thank you to my boy nori for putting me on i'm definitely gonna start going to that session that's the, that's my type of music right there so yeah on the way to new blue all right here we go back to new blue for the third time looking forward to it
sleepy it is very late at night that show had me feeling good that was a great show both Vittorio and Mar they did that I'm signing off for the night y'all have a good one the video ain't over so don't leave all right new angle I actually like this angle I think I'm gonna start doing this for my videos remind me to keep doing this for the videos we got to answer some Q&A but before we get to that I just want to say it was really fun going to the jam sessions and then going to see my boy Vittorio and going to see Mara play at New Blue. I love that venue. I love seeing great music there. They both have their own sound and it's very, very inspiring. Also, I didn't know what to expect when I went to the jam session at First Live. My boy Nori hit me up, he invited me. When I went there, I actually, since I didn't know him really well, I expected it to be a jazz jam session, but it was just straight funk, straight funk. And I love that. I love it. I love it. That's my thing. Y'all know that that's my thing. Overall, a great experience. And these were all on Tuesday night. This is what I'm telling you. New York is where it's at when it comes to these sessions. I'm going to one day do an episode on jam sessions on Friday night or Thursday night. It's just that I'm always, almost always working on that night, whether it's at Smalls or some other club or some other event. With that all being said, let's get to the Q&A section. Remember, if you want me to answer your question at the end of the next video, just send me a DM in one of my Instagrams that says Q&A and then the question. First question, the person commented this question, but I'm gonna let it slide because we just started doing it, but just remember to DM me the question, please. What are your favorite early day swing era tenor players and have you checked them out or only mo more modern players? I've checked out musicians in general of all eras. My favorite old school tenor players, Ben Webster, and Gene Emmons. Y'all know how I play, y'all have heard me. I, I come from a pretty soulful place when I play. So, uh, you know, soul forever er, over everything. It's not licks first for me. It's not complex language first, it's soul. That's just how I play. And Gene Emmons is the epitome of that. What more needs to be said? He can play the blues. He's, he's the man to listen to, has a really powerful sound. And also Ben Webster. One thing that I just really love about Ben Webster is that he plays like a singer. And that's always been my philosophy too. I like to think like a singer when playing, especially playing melodies. And he just had such a sweet sound. You can hear the lyrics in his playing and that's hard to do. As far as modern players, I don't listen to modern players in, in terms of modern jazz as much as somebody else my age might. I'd say as, as far as the jazz world, the most modern people I listen to on a daily basis is Eddie Harris. Now, as far as modern tenor players and, and the meaning of actual modern, Kirk Whalum all day. Next question. Is it worth it to go to music school? What are the benefits of going to music school over self-teaching? Now, I kind of touched on this the last video, but the last video kind of had a slightly different question. Uh, the, the person was asking more so about the benefits to going to prestigious schools like Berkeley or Juilliard. But this is more so asking about, is it worth it to go to school? I never want to steer anybody in the wrong direction or impose my beliefs on them, but I will say both are valid. It's what you get from it and how you go about approaching it. I think the modern day um, educational system in music has made us think that we have to go to school to be successful. Now, in classical music, I, yes, you have to. But as far as playing any other types of music, whether it's jazz or pop or any of those musics that you hear on, um, on the radio or in clubs or in well-known venues, you don't need to go to school. If you have the passion to do it, you need, you know, self-teaching yourself. The school is the records. Pick up a record you like and work to play what you want to hear. I'm very fortunate to be able to play with Philip Harper in his band. I've been playing in his band for probably two years or almost, I don't remember at this point. But Philip Harper, wonderful trumpet player, he was a jazz messenger in Art Blakey's band. And he always talks about, he's like, y'all young folks, y'all went, y'all all went to school. We had that stuff here, we learned it. 
we had it here. Truth be told, I mean, all the people we look up to, they didn't go to school. You know, John Coltrane, he wasn't going to South Community Institute Tech College of Jazz Performance. Barb Blakey wasn't. They weren't going to school for these. They just had a passion and they pursued it. On the other end of things, there are a lot of people who have gone to school who are doing very well. My good friend Luther Allison is an example. He went to University of Tennessee with me, and then he got his master's in Michigan, and he's a wonderful, wonderful pianist and drummer, and he's playing with Samira Joy and doing a lot of other types of work. Um, you know, after, when I went to Manhattan School of Music, I dropped out because I, I just wasn't having a good time, and I never really agreed with music school, but I kind of forced myself to push through U University of Tennessee because your parents have you thinking it's like, you know, school is the way. In summary, they are both very valid. It just depends on what you do with it. Last question. How did you first start doing gigs and what is doing that as a career like? Do you have any advice for young musicians looking to do the same? And is there anything you need to know or should expect going into it? All right, all right, all right, all right. First part of the question. My very first gig was at age 16. I played for somebody's 92nd birthday party. Obviously that didn't lead any, into anything, but that was my first gig and getting paid from that. I only got paid $50, but for a 16 year old, that was a lot. So I was like, oh wow, getting money to do something that I actually really like, I wanna keep doing that. Fast forward, um, I'm 19, I'm starting to play in a wedding band and I'm starting to play at a local jazz club. At that point, gigs were pretty scarce because I was just getting into it, so it's not like I was doing it every week. The feeling of playing music that I like and getting paid to do it, it felt so good that I was just sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting for the next gig. Eventually, after you know those accumulated, after I started playing with more people and started connecting with more people by going to jam sessions and just being put on and recommended by people, that's how they started to pick up. Um, and that's generally what happens. And also you have to go look for them for yourself. You hustle by way of connections and by way of just pitching yourself. And so that's really how I started getting into it. Do I have any advice for young musicians looking to do the same? Is there anything you need to know or should expect? Yeah, it's not gonna happen overnight. Now for some people it does, you feel me? I know some people who are really, really nice players who came to New York and immediately like that started getting gigs because they also had the connections. You gotta be patient and know that's not overnight. You got to swallow your pride and recognize that it's okay to work a second job. Before I did full-time music, I was bartending and I was doing music. Now I just do music, but music doesn't always pay the bills. You have to recognize that and you have to be okay with the fact that if you work if you work hard enough and you and you and you're really into it it's going to get to a point where you can make money off of it by itself that also depends on where you live unfortunately i mean some cities some towns you just can't make a living doing music last thing i'm going to say before i make this too long is that you need to realize that gigs aren't going to come to you you have to find ways to get in yourself let's say you move to LA right and nobody knows you there, but you're an amazing, one of the best saxophone players in the world. If you just sit there and, 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 and go like, huh, no one's calling me for gigs. Maybe they're tripping. Why is nobody calling me? You're shooting yourself in the foot because it's not about how you can play necessarily. It's about who you know, and it's about how hard you hustle. I hope everybody has a good one. Make sure you watch all the other videos. My next video is about to be about my international trip for a gig. Really looking forward to that. All right, peace. We out of here.